all the teams in the world, the toughest team to pick is a T20 side. So how do you start? I've looked at T20 cricket very closely over the years and I like a certain balance to the side. I'd like four batsmen with a keeper in, a batsman who can bowl a little bit, then a proper set of all-rounders, a batting all-rounder, a bowling all-rounder, finishing six and seven. Number eight can bat a little bit and then wicket-taking bowlers nine, ten and eleven. And that's often the right balance in good sides and I've tried to follow that. So who are my top five batsmen? Well, eyebrows raised first. I'm going to open with Decock and Warner. Then I've got Kohli, A.B. de Villiers and Glenn Maxwell. The reason I've got Kohli de Villiers Maxwell is average plus strike rate, which used to be 160, was considered a good score once. For each of those three is greater than 200, they just walk in. Where does that leave Chris Gale? The moment you play Chris Gale, then you've got, instead of the cock, you've got to have Butler as a keeper afterwards, then you're a bowler shot. So I had to really choose between the decock maxwell combination or the Gale-Butler combination. And I just love the energy and the match-changing ability of, of Glenn Maxwell. Also, with Chris Gale, a lot of his innings are under 30. And when he scores under 30, his strike rate is around 80. And that's, that's a little uncomfortable because he uses up a lot of balls. And if he doesn't get the big score, then he doesn't get there. I've spent a lot of time explaining Gale, right? Because he's just such a colossus in limited overs cricket. So those are my top five. I've got my keeper in. I've got a part-time bowler in, in Glenn Maxwell as well. So that, that's five. Now, who are my two all-rounders? Andre Russell walks into just about any side. He, get, he gets his strike rate plus average combination over 180. He's got upwards of 75, I think 76 wickets. So Russell just walks in. Every side he plays for seems to win tournaments, so maybe he'll be a good addition. That left number seven. He had to be a good enough bowler, give me runs at the end. I just love the energy that Dwayne Bravo brings to any side. He's always 10 plus in the field. He'll take a catch that changes things. So I've got Bravo at number seven. I just love Ashwin in, in the T20 format because he'll do something different. Not the best finisher maybe at number eight, but he's getting there. I'm very happy with Ashwin at number eight. Now that leaves two bowlers that I've loved to play Stark, but he hardly played any T20 internationals. So I've gone with Bumrah and I've gone with another favourite of mine, the Bangladeshi Mustafizur Rahman. What a bowler he is. He'll give you the end overs as well. I've got Bumrah with the end overs, you've got Bravo with the end overs. And I love the leg spin of Adam Zampa, who's, who's taken a lot of wickets this year too. And leggies just seem to do all right. Plus, with six bowlers and Maxwell, you can afford a wicket taking leg spin who might go a little wrong one day. So, Captain anybody? Virat Kohli, captain's RCB, not yet captain of India, has been very good in that role in the longer format, would be tempting to go there. But I've gone with somebody else. There's hardly any T20 internationals. In the biggest league in the world, he captained a side that really nobody expected would win the IPL. For his role with the Sunrisers and uh, just for the way he led that side, David Warner, I think, is my T20 captain. So there you are, that, that's, my, that's my T20 side to take on all comers. I'm sure yours will be completely different, but uh, let's have a debate.